guess what? <laughs> it's raining and I decided not to let the opportunity pass by. Now that the ground is totally soaked, I decided to plant those shallots that have been sitting on my counter for months. And they were actually the shallots that I harvested out of the same spot <laughs> earlier in one of my videos. So I went out and planted the shallots. Take a look. I'm going to plant some shallots in the rain. The thing is with the wood chips, there's so much mycelium in the soil underneath. I didn't even put in any, well you saw, I didn't put in any fertilizer amendments or anything and we'll see how they do. Obviously it's raining, it's a little difficult to do that, gather that up and put it in. So I just literally shoved the spade in, pushed it back like a gear shift to create a little bit of a crevice slipped that shallot in and closed it back up with about a, an inch or two of mud <laughs> on top. And I'll leave those wood chips back till I see what's happening. I'm just brushing back the top layer of wood chips. Not to disturb too much of the soil. I'm making one cut soil is nice and soft from all the rain. This is pushing this down two inches. I'm closing it up. Of course, growing shallots, when the bulbs start emerging, you want to keep that soil away from the bulb and just keep the roots in the soil. We learned this from Charles at Old Alabama Gardener. So I can't wait to see how these shallots do. I literally took them all that I took out, which weren't many, and put them back in. So <laughs> we'll see. I have heard from one of my super fans, Hillary in Texas and I'm so glad because she's been uh, incommunicado for a while and I was very concerned because she's got five acres near Waco and her farm garden was burning up last fall and she got a ton of rain so she's been really her garden has really been rejuvenated from all that so but I just wanted to bring up a, 
you know, something that faces a lot of people who are getting older and have property and they don't have children coming into the farm to, to want to maintain that. We need to have a registry in this country of young people who are interested in work in exchange for living so that we can put all those talents, those muscles and imagination and youthful passion to work in these properties where the soil has been, the health of the soil and the biodiversity has been preserved for generations. <sighs> now, somebody do that, okay? Or if there is one, please leave a comment underneath because I'm hearing from Sharon at Sharon's Natural Gardens in Delaware. You recall I visited her in 2016 on my Two Parts East playlist had about three or four videos with Sharon. Sharon's also on a five acre family farm, trying to keep it all going with rabbits, walnut trees, biodynamic compost, horses, uh, and a complete garden, chickens, you name it. So she needs help, Hillary needs help, and a lot of people need help. And a lot of people don't have property because it's so expensive. So let's get together and make those connections so that we can look forward to those those farms and acreage being preserved for future generations to grow our food. So it was bound to happen at some point. I've been using the Sony cameras since the beginning, since 2012. And I started with Sony Next 7, and then I heard about this great upgrade, A6000. I bought that. However, that did not have an audio port, so that was kind of a mistake to buy that camera. Sony realized their mistake and got the audio port in their update, which was the A6300, which I, of course I bought. And then of course you buy a microphone that goes with your camera and all of a sudden, and lenses, and all of a sudden you've got a whole line and you're kind of stuck. And that's the way I am now. I mean, I have been. <laughs> and yesterday I was rushing, coming out to do a pickup shot because I wanted to edit this video and get it to my sound editor. Came out with the microphone, the camera, the microphone on the tripod, just like that. And it banged against something because it was extended up. And the whole camera went down on this brick path in my front here. And when I picked it up, the lens wouldn't move. It was an adjustable focal length lens that I used 90% of the time. No longer working. So. I had to quickly think, gotta get this shot. You always have to get the shot. Can't compromise and can't do it with a 35. I've got a fixed rate 35 on there right now, which is a beautiful lens, but 35 is just that wide. Not wide enough for, a garden, for garden stuff. And so I went and got my old Canon lens from my, I had the original 5D. Sold that a long time ago, but I kept those lenses, the gorgeous lenses, and had an adapter, I put it on, and you can't tell if it's in focus. <laughs> so you just kind of have to guess, and because there's no autofocus when you use the adapter. I got what I needed, and today I'm using the, like I said, the 35. I also have a 50, I have a 220, I have a 30 macro. So, you know, I'm fully vested, invested in the, the Sony line, but what I really need is a flip screen. So this may be the time when I have to make the jump and change cameras, change brands. Let's see, so wish me luck on that. <laughs> what do you think? Thanks so much for watching this channel, liking my videos, checking in with me on a rainy morning in Los Angeles. 
and I really appreciate your support and I'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, please watch these. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And I'll see you in the next video. Can I see your eyes? Can I see your eyes? She has blue eyes.